What's going on guys, welcome to a new video where today I wanna to talk about a camera that I do not leave the house without. If I'm gonna be traveling, this is one camera that I can just throw in my bag, throw in my purse, and always have on me because it's so easy, it's so convenient, and it's so amazing. Now this is the Insta 361 X. This has been out for quite some time now, but I am constantly getting questions about how I am filming and how I'm editing some of the things that I'm sharing on my social media. So I figured I would tell you. I have no idea why my voice is cracking, but perhaps I am getting an illness. So this is the Insta 361 X and it does shoot 5.7K video or 18 megapixel pictures. And I have been traveling nonstop this year and a lot of the stuff that I have film for my Instagram, for my Twitter video, for a lot of my YouTube videos. It has been from this little camera. Now don't get me wrong, I still bring my Sony a7R 3 with me everywhere, but carrying that compared to carrying this tiny little camera sometimes is just so much easier. But with this camera, I'm able to upload things to my phone, edit right on my phone, and get content up immediately, which I feel like is very important because sometimes if I sit on content for a while, I forget about it and I never post it. So I'm gonna show you guys how I edit with the Insta 361 X app. Very simple, it comes with this cord. Justine has taught me the method of tying the cord to the case or else you're gonna lose it. I don't know what it is about this cord, but it will disappear unless you're responsible, and then it won't disappear. You can also transfer footage wirelessly. It just takes a little bit longer. So personally, I like to have the cord. It does transfer quicker and it saves your battery. But if you don't have the cord, that's okay. It doesn't matter. Here we have on the local, and here we have whatever is on this camera. Not even sure what that's from. That looks like from my trip to Tennessee. But we will go with local. We will go over here to video. I don't take too many pictures, honestly. I feel like I should, but I don't. Now, one of the videos that I posted on here from my trip to Spain, I feel like confused a lot of people, which was actually kind of why I wanted to post this video to show you guys how it was done. So I actually don't need to have this plugged in right now because I have already transferred all of my my footage to this app so technically I don't need to plug it in so I'm not going to so right here in my app I'm gonna give you guys an example of how I edited this one video which everyone seemed to love because it is so simple and you can also edit this on your desktop on your laptop but for me it's just so much easier on the go on mobile I just I just do it this way and what I do like about this is that it has audio as well so this does record audio half the time I don't use it because I'll put music over top of it but a lot of the times I do use it so that's also very nice to have so here I was in the ocean of Mallorca the best part about this camera is that it can give you options right here I have the 9 by 16 wide if I click it I now have 9 by 16 1 by 1 16 by 9 which is what I use for YouTube oh sorry that was 16 by 9 wide this is 16 by 9 so a lot of the time depending on what I'm editing for I will use the 9 by 16 wide for Instagram or maybe Twitter video a lot of other social platforms TikTok. I don't know if you guys know, but I'm on TikTok. And if I am doing YouTube, I will do the 16 by nine wide. How I edited the video of me floating in the ocean where it looked like a drone was above me, this is how. This stick is basically how the magic happens. The software actually edits out the selfie stick, so you do not see this, which gives it kind of like the drone-like effect where you can't see the camera and you can't see the stick. This was me floating in the ocean around people. Kicking my little leggies, holding my stick. Gotta do what it takes to get the shot. Okay, so what I'll do first is I will click this button up here and I will hit trim. This will take a section of what you filmed because I highly doubt you're gonna want the entire clip. A lot of the footage is me close up looking at the camera. I will scroll through to see where I want to start my clip. So I'll start it there. I'll then hit the end button and I will drag it back so that I will have a, let's do a 15 second clip. So now that I have, actually I have 17 second, I'll then hit the Viewfinder, I will spin it around, I'll zoom, I'll pinch to zoom out, I will hold this red button, and here was where I'm just basically moving it around to get the shot that I want. I'll zoom in, I'll zoom out, get to Tiny Planet if you go all the way to the end. So people were very confused as to how this camera was floating above me. They're like, is it a drone? We don't understand. So even from there, you can still change how you want the frame. I could then change it to 19 by 16, one by one, one by one, 16 by nine wide. But this is good because a lot of the times I'm editing things on the go and I'll use it for mobile, but I'll wanna use the same clip for a YouTube video. So all I have to do is go back, change it to 16 by nine wide and re-export it. They have a bunch of different cool filters. You can do music, we'll add some music. That's my favorite one. What I do like too is that you can adjust the speed. So wherever your cursor is, you can hit two, you can drag it, 
and then you can hit stop, and that portion of what you selected will then be times two. That speed up wasn't actually necessary, so I'm gonna go ahead and delete it. From there, I think I'm happy with it. I will go ahead, click that button, and I will just save it to my photo album. I wanna export it as that. I will hit okay, and it is now exporting. Another cool video I shot with my friend Alex was um, we rode this thing called a Riker, which is basically like a three-wheeled motorcycle. I haven't posted this video yet, but I wanna show you guys some of the shots. It looks like a drone is following us, but it's not. It's just because it edits out the stick and I'm able to move it around. I'm able to get the shots that I want. Technology is crazy. I also have the flow state stabilization on, which it does an incredible job of stabilization. There is nothing worse than having shaky footage and not being able to do anything about it. I'll also show you guys how you can use the pivot points and smart track. So I'll do smart tracking. Well, I seem to have put that on my hands, but it will track my hands. I'll stop that and then I'll spin over here because now I want to smart track that horse, the horse's neck. So it's tracking the horse's neck. I can stop the track, I can go up here, and now I want to smart track Justine in front of me. So now it's tracking the horse's butt in front of me. Not my best movie, but you guys can see how you can then use pivot points and tracking to do that. So there you guys have it. That's just a very quick demo of how I edit everything mobily on the Insta360 ONE X. I've been using this camera for quite some time now and I love it. Now this camera does start at around $399, but I just saw on Amazon that you can actually get a bundle which includes the camera, the invisible selfie stick, the hyperlapse, and an SD card for $4.54, which is pretty good. There will be a link in the description if you guys want to check it out. Highly recommend it. It's just been my go-to camera. It's so fun. It fits in my backpack. This fits in my backpack. It's just really cool, and people are always like, what are you doing? And I'm like, 360 stuff. Sometimes they get it, and sometimes they look at me like I'm crazy, but I'm used to that. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. There's a link in the description, like I said. Make sure you thumb up this video, subscribe, do all the things that you need to do, and I will see you guys again very soon.